Well, I want to do some more testing on this knife, and there's some more information that uh, came forth since I posted my review on it. And it was kind of good that I didn't know before doing the review, because obviously it makes it uh, unbiased. But now that I know that this is a counterfeit, because it's not just a clone. A lot of people say it's a clone. It's the same design. That right there is the maker mark for Surge Knives. And I don't think it's cool to use fake marks. So if that's fake, why not make that fake as well? You know what I mean? It's performed very well. I have no idea what this steel really is. I have no way, like I said, of testing it. But what I will do is a very unofficial, unscientific comparison between a knife I know has real S35VN, okay, which is on this uh, hinderer. So, this is the Fura knife. I'm gonna do some, uh, some testing. I'm gonna take some paracord here. I have a big old spool of it, and I'm gonna uh, measure out uh, 20 foot pieces. I'm gonna do, you know, a cut test. All right, and we're gonna see how long this uh, edge will retain uh, its sharpness. Now, because the blades are, like I said, different blade geometry and everything, they are uh, different lengths. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use the uh, curvature towards the tip here, okay, on both knives. In other words, when I'm cutting the paracord, I'm not gonna cut here, then here, then here. You know, I wanna be consistent. I'm gonna cut in the same spot, right where the, uh, the most curvature is. So right here, and right here, okay? And we're gonna compare them. We're gonna see how long this lasts. Now, of course, both these knives are used. Neither one has a factory edge on it, but they both have been sharpened before I turn the, uh, the video on here, and lightly stropped, so they both are tip top. A piece of paper here, just to give you a quick, quick demo on the uh, the edge. All right. Cut ones there, and cut ones here as well. So you can see they're both paper shaving, paper cutting, you know, edges. All right, there's nothing again scientific here whatsoever, but I just want to show that they're both nice and sharp starting off. So I'm gonna cut camera here for a second. I'm take tape measure, excuse me, and I'm gonna measure out. 20 feet of paracord, all right? Two lengths of it, and we'll start with one knife and I'll literally just cut this up until the knife goes dull. I don't know if it'll last 20 feet. If it does, we'll go past that. But uh, I just wanna kinda give a comparison with a genuine S35VN blade to see how the edge retention is. And then later in the video, we'll go outside, I'm gonna take the torch, and this is supposed to be titanium. I'm going to uh, you know, heat it up and see if it changes colors. All right, so, so far we're about halfway through roughly 10 feet or so. When I'm all done, I'll measure the lengths that are left in comparing the knives, but very uh, consistent cutting test here. It's much different than cutting up cardboard and plastic jugs and you know zip ties and stuff like that, because thus far in using this knife, and I use it a bunch, it seemed nice and sharp. But in consistently cutting and chopping this uh, paracord, I'm definitely finding some resistance now and not as clean of a cut. So before, you know, if I use a lot of pressure here, I can get a good clean cut you know, on the edge. But again, same spot on the blade here. It's taking a lot more pressure to make those cuts. And let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. It's not, um, you know, cutting every fiber either now. Part of the edge is starting to get dull. As I cut this, you'll see it's flattening out and it's spreading the, uh, the paracord out. All right. All right. I'm kind of alternating between slicing and doing push cuts, you know? You see some of the push cuts are still working nicely, but as I slice, it's starting to get really sloppy. All right. Yeah. So you can see it's, it's really flattening the cord, okay? Those cuts are pretty shoddy. In comparison, just real quick, just to show you, a cut on the uh, the fresh hinderer. I mean, that's a nice clean cut, right? Again, you know, it's starting to miss some of those fibers, all right? So it is starting to dull up a little bit. I'm gonna keep going until I can't really, I can't say, all right, well, this one's cutting cleaner than the other one. I wanna make sure it's not really cutting the power cord at all. See how far we can get, but I can't do a, uh, you know, like a, what's it called, like a fast forward or whatever, or a time lapse type thing here, just because my editing program won't let me. I, I wish I could do that from the beginning, so you could see all the cuts, but unfortunately I can't. So 
So again, trying to use the exact same area here towards the tip, right where that curvature is, to get consistent cutting in the same spot. And this is not a professional test or anything, but it's gonna give me an idea compared to what I know for a fact is S35VN. So yeah, I mean, some of these cuts, it's missing some strands. It's not cutting all the way through. Interesting. It's not gonna take much more, I think, before I'm gonna call it quits with this, uh, this knife. I'm cutting, you know, maybe eighth of an inch. Just trying to get as many cuts as I possibly can out of this line. It's taking quite a bit of pressure now. I don't know if you guys can, whoops, sorry. I forgot I'm still zoomed in here. It's taking way more pressure. Like when I started, my cuts were like that. You know, and it was zipping through. And now it's just flattening the cord out. All right, so let's do a few more. But again, way more pressure. I know you can't tell that maybe, but I can definitely tell you that I'm pushing a lot harder to get some of these cleaner cuts. All right. All right, grabbed a couple plates here just so I can clean off my cutting board. That's what's left from the, uh, the Fura knife. All right. All right. So there you go. There's my tactical confetti. All right, so now let's grab a piece of paper. Let's do some paper cutting. Again, just use, because obviously down here is still nice and sharp, so. Still slicing paper. Not as well, though. Certainly not as well. You know, in comparison to down here. Down here, is, there's no resistance. Nice and sharp. But up top, we're doing all the cutting here. Not as good. Oops. You can see the cer certain areas right within my two nails, well, actually more like this, that there's definitely a dull spot. Let's see if I can zoom in, get a good, good close look at our edge. No chips or anything like that, but there wouldn't be, I don't think, from uh, cutting power cord. But anyway, starting to dull out. Let's uh, put this aside. And let's try the uh, the hinder. Actually, I have to measure out my an extra 20 feet, so I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back for a second here. Actually, it wasn't going all that long, um, but this is already starting to do what the, uh, the Fuhrer was doing in flattening with the push cuts here. All right, slicing is, you know, it's still a nice clean cut because again, I'm using portions of the edge. They won't really use that much, at least for this, uh, this test. But in using the same spot and doing these, uh, these push cuts, if you could tell, but it's starting to flatten the cord a little bit and we're not getting full, perfect, clean cuts anymore. So like right now, I kind of feel like this is about where the Fura knife was when I stopped cutting with the Fura. And I can tell you without even measuring that this isn't as much uh, of a pile. So I know I cut less cord. Let me put this on the um, table here for a second. All right, let's grab a little plate. All right, so here's the, the hinderer, right? Compared to the Fura. And you can see clearly, I mean, obviously this isn't like a perfect representation of where it is, but I know I cut more cord with the, the Fura, all right, than the hinder. I don't really even have to measure it. I probably will anyway. Let me uh, roll this up so I can show you what the, the hank looks like. Yeah, no, there's definitely more here, which is a little surprising to me. But again, there's different edge geometry. There's so many different factors. How I'm cutting it, it could just be hand fatigue. You know, maybe I'm making sloppier cuts now than when I started. But here's the, uh, the hank of cord left, you know, from the, the hinderer. 
and here's the one. I don't know if that doesn't look like much to you, but just in winding it up, I can feel there's a little more. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's measure it so we know for sure what's left. I'll do this in front of the camera if I can. Let me put that towards the end. All right. It stops there, so we'll say 72 inches is right there. Bring that back. All right. So here we go, 72 plus 52. Let's call it, let's just say 57, right? So 72 and 57, hmm, 72, 57, so 100, 129, all right, 129 inches, I believe. And correct me if I'm wrong, and quick mental math. Well, let's try the hinderer. Same deal. All right, 72 is right here. All right, make sure there's no knot in here. All right, so 72 and, whoops. Well, there's 72 again right here. So 72 and 72 is 144, right? Plus. Plus 41, let's just say. So 183. That's uh, definitely more. So yeah, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Um, after trying this, Again, just being so unofficial, I'm still going to say that, yeah, it's it probably an accurate uh, stamping of the steel. It's, it's very surprising to me, honestly. I went into this test thinking that this was going to fail, or with more testing that it would clearly show that it's not, you know, the uh, what, what it says or what it claims to be. But, you know what, I guess it is. I guess it is. We're going to see though, because I want to go outside right now and I'm going to heat up this uh, titanium and we'll see if it really is titanium. But uh, yeah, beyond that, even if it is real tie and it's a really good deal and stuff, I, I really don't get behind any kind of counterfeits. I really, really wish that this marking was not here. I don't like it. I don't like supporting companies that steal um, logos. You know, it's just an outright lie. Copying a design and making it better or making it more affordable or whatever. That's okay, you know, it's very sketchy still. It's a very gray area uh, from a, a knife community, you know, political standpoint. Obviously, you know, people don't like seeing, uh, you know, designs being stolen and stuff. But hey, you know, if you're making, the real knife is like $300 and not everyone's gonna be able to get that. So if they can get a $25 version of it to see if they like it, that's cool. But that is not cool. I don't like seeing counterfeit markings, okay? And that's why once I learned this as a counterfeit, and obviously not made by Serge Knives, even though his logo's on there. Um, I, I thought, yeah, you know what? Maybe that's fake too. You know, if they're gonna put that fake on there, that's a lie. Why wouldn't that be a lie? But in, in testing it now, you know, side by side, it really just seems like it, it might not be a lie. You know, and as someone pointed out too, is you can get S35BN and titanium fairly cheap. This is, this is a very small knife. Small knife, easily put together, you know, in a uh, big Chinese manufacturing plant. So it's not like completely out of the realm that they can use those real materials and still make money. Clearly, knives made overseas uh, have less, less of a cost because of, of you know, labor laws and, and so forth. You know, it's hard to compete with American made stuff, um, especially custom knives. You know, when you have a, a, a manufacturer or a, uh, you know, a plant that's pumping out these knives, they can do a lot cheaper than someone hand making them. It's still no substitute for the real deal. So if you do like the design, I highly recommend you check out Serge Knives, which um, I'm gonna do myself as well, because I was not aware of them before you know, getting this knife and reading your guys' comments. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go outside and let's uh, see if this titanium is real. We're gonna heat it up with this torch right here. So we'll be back. All right, so there's a knife on a rock. I'm gonna hit it with this torch and see if I can get it to color.
All right, well, we've successfully done some heat coloring on this thing. It is thicker pieces, so it's taking a while with this uh, little torch, but let me uh, zoom out here. Make sure it's not too hot to touch. And yeah, I can uh, confirm that that's actually titanium for our handles. So, it's interesting. Alright, so we're back inside for a minute here. And I also tried the uh, clip off camera. And it might be hard to tell, but that is also like color anodized very lightly. A little bluish hue going on. I don't remember the original color of this uh, standoff here, but it is bright gold now. So I don't know if the heat had something to do with that, or I just didn't notice it before, but that is certainly yellow. But uh, yeah, so it does heat anodize, or not really anodize, you guys know that, but heat coloring, whatever. So uh, I do believe it's titanium. I do believe it's uh, S35VN, pretty surprising. Uh, I didn't do a cut test before I realized on the um, hinderer. So let me show you what that looks like in comparison. Just the tip here. All right, we're doing the cutting. See, it's actually kind of dull, pretty dull, just in that one spot where I did the cutting. It's pretty surprising. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing to me. Show this one again. Yeah, it's still kind of dull in that one spot, but it does feel a little bit better than the uh, the hinderer. Just a very confined little area there on the edge. Uh, yeah, I don't know what kind of education this brought, but hopefully it was uh, at least entertaining. Um, yeah, I don't know. My conclusion is uh, yeah, I do believe this is S35VN, and I do believe that's titanium. By the way, on the back, that's not rust, but all that oil. I didn't realize when I had it on this side, I was trying to hit the whole handle, but that oil around the pivot had baked onto the blade a little bit. I'm sure you can rub that off with a little rust eraser or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, my conclusion, yeah, it seems legit. However, again, I can't stress this point enough. Uh, copies are one thing, counterfeits are another. I do not promote counterfeits. I don't like that fake logo on there. Therefore, I'm giving this up. Uh, I'm doing a giveaway right now. If you're watching this video, post a comment down below. I don't know how long I'll you know let it go, but I'll just pick a you know one of the comments and I'll send it to you. All right. So if you're interested, let me know down below. But I don't want to uh, hang on to this. Like I said, I'm not. I don't mind doing like a uh, a video on a counterfeit just for educational purposes. And I've said this before. A lot of people out there really want these expensive knives. They just can't afford them. They never will. So people have the idea of, well, what's the harm of you know getting the $10 version or the $20 version just to see if they like the design or whatever. Like I said, people have such a, a varying degree of hatred towards counterfeits. I'm not for them. Because I do you know knife videos, yeah, every now and again I'll talk about a counterfeit, but I'm not trying to promote them in any kind of way whatsoever. Um, if you like this design, it's a very cool design. Do check out Serge Knives, uh, S-E-R-G-E, I believe is how it's spelled. Um, that one I believe is called His Bean. So just Google that up, check out the website. I'll put a link to his, uh, his website right in the uh, description of this video. Um, check him out, you know, if you like that design, save up the money and get the real deal and support him because he came up with that design, you know? So, uh, you know, credit should go where credit is due. And um, the company that made that does not deserve credit for it. However, I do believe the materials are accurate. And I've said this uh, in other videos as well in the past, is that a lot of these uh, foreign made knives, you know, sometimes it seems too good to be true, but sometimes they are the real deal. The materials are there. It's just they're cutting so much cost and, and labor and stuff, and they're getting the materials way cheaper than we are in the U.S. So, like I said, U.S. made knives usually can't compete with those as long as the quality is the same. The quality in this one, I can almost guarantee, isn't as nice as the, the real deal. You know, I don't have one to compare, but I've had many different counterfeits compared to the real deals or the originals, you know, the actual knives that they're trying to replicate and, and you know, be a fake version of. And 100% of the time, the real one is much better. 
So there you go. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If nothing else, a little bit of entertainment. Um, I do believe that's uh, those are genuine materials that they, they suggest. I believe that's titanium and S35VN, but I still don't recommend buying a counterfeit knife, you know. Like I said, I, I like giving credit where credit's due. So uh, thank you to all you guys in the last video on this knife uh, for letting me know about the bean and Sarah's knives. I, I've never, never heard of them before, you know? I go, oh my God, Congo, I never heard. Yeah, I know, there, there's tons of knives I never heard of before. Uh, my, my main thing is uh, production folders, but obviously there's a lot of custom knives out there, custom makers I'm not familiar with yet, and I love being exposed to them. And you guys helped to uh, expose me to that particular maker and his designs and stuff. Um, and yeah, so I'll check it out myself in the future. But anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, nothing scientific whatsoever. But at the very least, hopefully it was a little bit entertaining. And give me suggestions what to do with this stuff. Because I'll save this. I'll do something with it. It's nice and fluffy. But I don't know. I don't want to waste it. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you soon. Take care.